Hello, welcome back to The Interface. My name's Alex, and this is my infotainment guide and walkthrough for the brand new Cherry Tiggo 7. Now this vehicle's got a 12.6 inch infotainment screen with support for wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. There's also quite a few features on their built-in software, which we're gonna go over now. So this is the main home screen, and you've got three widgets, basically. So your left one is for your radio, the middle one is for some shortcuts for controlling the vehicle, such as window locks, locking the doors, and opening the tailgate. And the one on the right is for your Bluetooth. If you swipe down from the top, you get the control center, which does respond quite quickly. You get some messages on the left-hand side. So in this instance, it says low washer fluid, please refill soon. And there are some shortcuts here, such as Bluetooth, turning off the speed limit assist, which that goes away quite quickly, uh, the driver monitoring system, or DMS, the ISS, which is the uh, start and stop, intelligent start stop. Uh, ESC off, so you can turn on and off the traction control quite easily. The AVM, this car is full of uh, acronyms. Uh, the around view monitor, which is the 540 degree camera system on the Tiggo 7. There's this button here, which lets you add in other shortcuts. So what you can do is add in uh, LDP, which is Lane Departure Prevention, uh, the Screen Cleaning, Touch Tone, and PDC, which is Park Distance Control. And you can remove whatever shortcuts you want in here. So I'm gonna add in this one here. And that lets you turn on and off the touch tone. So there's this little click that happens whenever you touch something. There's these two sections down here. One is for the screen brightness, and one is for the volume. There you go. Uh, and then in the top right corner is some icons. So one is for the volume, and that's letting you know the volume's on mute. There's the time, which is, yep, that's correct. And there's a little icon here for the wireless charging. So there's a 50 watt wireless charger in the summit trim, and that lets you know that's being used. If you swipe up from the bottom, you do get the climate control section. Now this is nearly all controlled from touch-based stuff, basically. Uh, so there are some uh, buttons underneath the screen here. Uh, you can swipe on this one and that adjusts your fan speed and there's one for the temperature on the left hand side. Uh, they're not physical by any means, they're just all touch based uh, with not much feedback on them, um, but they are they, they do get the job done. Now once you open up the on-screen controls for the climate system, you can then control the temperature here and both versions of the Tiggo 7 do have dual zone climate control, uh, which is pretty impressive considering the price point of the entry level trim. Uh, you've got the fan speed down here, and we do have a button on the climate control section for the air purification system. So you've got these smart modes here, we've got smart deodorization. Get rid of that. Yeah, get, gets rid of any bad smells. We've got rapid warming, rapid cooling. And then on this section here, we have got the seat controls. Um, so both seats in the front do have heating and cooling ability, both of which are three stages. There's also the setting section here with quite a few bits and pieces. So we've got automatic cabin ventilation. So it says the air conditioning will be turned on after unlocking the vehicle. Automatic cabin air cleaning says if used before parking, air conditioning will be turned on after unlocking the vehicle. And you can do customized air conditioning. So once you turn on the automatic air conditioning, it won't just um, sort of put itself on the most powerful mode. It will have a default setting which you can choose. And you've got automatic defogging. So the air conditioning will turn on automatically if fogging is detected. Some nice options in there. And there are these little shortcuts here. So you can just swipe on this here and that adjusts the temperature quite handily without having to go directly into the infotainment system. Quite good there. And then along the bottom, we have got all your different pages. So you've got the phone, the DAB radio, a strange icon on there, settings, vehicle settings, apps, and then back to the home screen. And that's pretty much a lot for the main screen, really. So let's look at the, the app view here. So we've got audio, local settings, vehicle settings, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, phone, pictures, video, around view monitor, electronic manual, and the map ISA. This button here takes you to the vehicle settings, which we'll look at in a second. This button here takes you to the settings, again, which we'll look at in a bit, and then the phone, and then the DAB radio. So the first one is audio, and this is simply your uh, DAB, FM, and AM radio. You click on that section there to get back to the main view of the radio stations, and this button here will give you the option between radio, Bluetooth, and local music. You can load manual files onto the Tiggo 7 and just 
read them off a memory stick or something. So it's quite handy there. It says FM, DAB and AM. Uh, AM is quite rare to see now in 2025 because a lot of vehicles, especially EVs, they don't seem to have AM anymore for whatever reason. So it's actually quite rare to see that on this vehicle. And then you've got some favorites. So if I go into a DAB station here and click on absolute 80s and click the heart icon and then go back to the main screen, you can see I've got the favorite radio station in there. Yeah, it's fairly simple really. Um, once you listen to a station, you can pause it and this little um, vinyl head uh, goes back on the vinyl and then you start playing, so nice little touch there. And we've got some settings here. So service following, there's no explanations of what any of this stuff does, but judging from what I know, that'll probably just be that DAB and FM can conjoin or can link together. So if you're on DAB, it will then switch to the FM equivalent. That's more than likely what that means. We've got announcement settings, you've got alarm, road traffic flash, transport flash, warning service, news flash, area weather, event announcements, special events, program information, sport, and then financial reports. Go back here, and that's pretty much the media app. Go back to the main screen, got local settings here. So these are all your system settings, like the screen stuff, Apple CarPlay, that sort of stuff. So you've got Bluetooth, the Bluetooth name of the vehicle, and then Bluetooth visibility, you can turn that on and off. Got a paired device, there's one iPhone connected with Apple CarPlay, and this button here will let you forget the, the uh, phone there. And you can refresh this and it will find other devices. It might find my camera actually, because that does have Bluetooth. Sometimes they, it does show up. Uh, we've got sound here, so we've got the volume adjustment. So you've got loads of different options in terms of the types of sources for audio. So you've got navigation, the voice assistant, media, Bluetooth music, Bluetooth phone, alarm tone, and startup music. And there are three different physical places on the car to change the volume. So there's one in the center console here with this little wheel. So that lets you to adjust this media volume. There's one on the wheel. That it's again they're just the media and there's one on the dashboard here which lets you adjust the tone sound all quite handy there go back here we've got the default volume which is quite good to see uh, speed compensated volume so off low medium and high alert tone type traditional technological doesn't actually dem demo what it's going to sound like it got advanced eq is on custom um we'll just do pop there or jazz classic rock vocal we'll just do pop uh, you've got balance and fade, so you can adjust where the center stage is in the vehicle. So you can put it in the front, you can put it in the back. It's all quite standard stuff, really. Uh, loudness, you can turn that on. Touch tone, incoming call announcement, and then you can reset all the settings there. You've got voice, so continuous dialogue time, off 10, 15, or 20 seconds, how long it will take to respond. And voice wake up, so hello, Cherry. Here. What can you do? Here is what I can do, for example. You may ask me to make phone calls. Um, so you can, looks like you can control the air conditioning mainly. Um, it is now listening to what I'm asking. Um, there's a fair amount of stuff in here, like temperature. You can use basic language with it. So you say the driver's too hot, um, the passenger seat's too low, or the temperature's too low on the passenger seat. You can open the sunroof, you can tilt the sunroof. Um, you can push back the curtain, which is the, the blind on the sunroof. Sorry, I don't understand, okay. There you go, so it's actually opened the, the sunroof now. Um, so all quite nice stuff in there, really. Go back to the main screen. Uh, you can disable the voice commands. You can do sound source localization, so off, driver, or orientation. So uh, whoever asks the voice assist assistant, it will then direct the sound to that person without lighting up all the speakers in the car. Got display, so you've got classic or streamlined. So streamlined gets rid of a lot of the, the chrome on the infotainment system. So you've got classic here, a bit more blue. Um, and the, on my driver display, I've actually got some dials, um, which is quite interesting. And then if I do streamlined, there's just some numbers on the screen. A bit more modern feeling, really. Uh, display mode is auto, day, or night. So night mode will put everything into black, basically. And it is quite dark and quite hard to see. Then brightness settings. You've got the uh, auto brightness for each display here. So it has actually lowered it, which I'm going to turn off and put it on full brightness. Uh, and then down here we've got screen cleaning, so um, if you want to clean the screen, you can. It lets you see where all the fingerprints are. If you press and hold that for five seconds, it will get rid of the mode for you. And then you can reset all the settings for the screen settings. 
system. So you've got the language settings, you've got English and Chinese. That is all that that's all the options there are. Oh, actually, there's Portuguese, Sp Spanish, Italian, Turkish, and loads of different options in there. You've got the format for the day. So you've got the American format, you've got um, the English format, and then you've got the one that's inverted. So if we do that one, 24 hour time, so you can turn on, turn that on and off. Automatically update date and time. Got the uh, enter the date and time manually if you want to. Got the option to change the formats for the miles and kilometers. Same for the pressure. And then you've got some software versions in here. And actually, the, the Tigo 7's got a fairly decent sized storage SSD. So 128 gigs of storage. Uh, as you'll see in a bit, you can actually put your own files on here, which is quite cool. And again, you can reset everything back to how you want it. And then device manager. Again, there's only the one device connected to this car and it is an iPhone and it's got CarPlay connected, but this car does also have Android Auto as well. Vehicle settings, so there's a fair amount of stuff in here actually. So the, this car's got uh, three different driver modes, Eco, Normal and Sport. Normal mode, Eco mode. And there's that quite quickly spoken uh, notification. Sport mode. There we go. Uh, and you can lock and unlock the doors here, lock the windows. If we click this button here, that will open the tailgate. Uh, vehicle settings, so you've got the uh, different options in here for the steering modes. So you've got steering forced uh, is linked to the driver mode, that's on or off, and you can choose whatever driver mode you want the car in. Easy entry and easy exit, so uh, with cars with electronic seats, they will push the seat forward to let you get in easier, and so on and so forth. Um, opening height tailgate for settings, so you can um, opening Opening height setting for tailgate, so you can choose how high you want the, the boot to open. Uh, door lock settings, so you've got lights, light and horn, so whenever you lock on other doors, it would do whatever. Uh, automatic locks, when you walk away from the car, it will unlock and lock the doors for you. And then unlock driver door only, so if you only want the driver's door to be opened when you get to the car, that will be what will happen. Uh, if you leave a phone in the wireless phone charger, it will uh, audibly remind you that you've left a phone in the charger. You can turn on and off the wireless charging for phones. You've got maintenance reminders, uh, and then you can also customize the steering wheel button. So there is a, a star icon on this screen here, and you can make it do rear view mirror adjustment, uh, audio source switching, all the vehicle settings. Um, maintenance reset as well. So this car has done 47 miles, uh, and it says the next maintenance is due in just under 10,000 miles, so it's every 10,000 miles and uh, just uh, just under a year. The smart key, uh, we've got unlock when approaching and lock when leaving. Uh, there's also a sensing, uh, presence sensing tailgate as well. So if you've got the key in your pocket and you get close to the boot, the boot will open for you. Again, that only comes on the uh, Summit trim, the top spec trim. If you do have the uh, Aspire trim, that doesn't come on that trim at all. And then also welcome when approaching, so the lights will turn on when you get near the car. Uh, driver assistance, you've got integrated cruise assist, ICA, uh, deactivation reminder, so it says here. Uh, this system plays an alarm to inform the driver that the function has been deactivated. There is no alarm notification when the switch is turned off. Uh, drive away information, so when you pull away it will say, uh, this will also uh, continuously monitor the movement of the vehicle in front of you. If the system recognises that the vehicle is in front of you and is driving away, uh, and you did not start your vehicle, it will trigger a text reminder. Speed limit assist, so you've got um, change alert, tow icon and sound. Uh, overspeed alarm, got intelligent high beam assist or IHBA. I did say earlier that they uh, there's a load of acronyms in this car. Um, there's yeah, loads and loads of abbreviations and stuff. Uh, it says this system automatically turns on our high beams when the conditions are met. So that's also turned off currently, let's turn it on. Uh, intelligent speed control system, so it says after this function is turned on, the speed, uh, the system continuously monitors the vehicle speed, um, and you can, um, yeah, there's a whole load of stuff there you can read. Uh, intelligence, intelligent avoidance system, so if there's a vehicle to your right, um, it will take a swerve to make sure that you have got a bit of space in between the vehicle and yourself. There's also forward collision warning, automatic emergency braking, lane departure warning, lane pre departure prevention, door opening warning, uh, emergency lane keeping, ELK, uh, blind spot detection, rear collision warning, driver monitoring system alarm, and rear cross traffic assist. Headlight settings, so headlight height adjustment. There's no physical button for that, but it is all on the screen. Uh, so there's three, two, one, and zero for the height, and also headlight delay. And then there's a load of options in here for the uh, ambient lighting. So you've got the 
atmosphere light, as Cherry call it. Um, so you've got loads of different colours in here. You've got like neon green, uh, not massively bright, but it, you've got red here, purple, um, yellow and different things. And you can also have music rhythm. So if there's music playing, it will animate to whatever the, the music is sounding like. But there is also linked to drive mode. So if you change the mode here. Normal mode. And go back a page. That would be purple. Eco, Eco mode. is obviously green. And then sport mode. Sport mode is obviously red. There's vehicle comfort as well, so rear view mirror adjustment. You can adjust that from these buttons here, but there is also adjustment from uh, the physical buttons on the left and right hand side of this door here. And then also in vehicle child presence detection. So if you do lock the car or just leave the car unattended and there's someone in the, in the car, it will most likely have a, a very loud alarm system. Apple CarPlay, so it is completely wireless. It does seem to perform fairly well. So you've got podcasts, music, Apple Maps, Google Maps, all sorts of third-party apps that you want. Android Auto, same sort of deal there. And there is the phone app. So uh, you can't use the phone app if the phone is connected via Apple CarPlay because it is using Wi-Fi, but you can also use Bluetooth at the same time. Pictures, so if you want to plug in a memory stick or something, you can load your pictures on the car. Same for video. Oh, go back to that screen there. And then uh, a round view monitor. So we've got this loads of cameras on the car. So you've got the left-hand side there behind you, right-hand side at the front, and then the front again. Got these side cameras with the mirrors. So if I move the wheel there, you can see the wheels have been moved. Um, front, 3D mode. So a really, really impressive system, really. So you can drag this camera around and look around the whole car. Yeah, pretty quite good there. And then you've got the, the rear view camera as well. There are a few settings. You've got a round view monitor start animation. So what is that then? Let's go back. Not really sure what that is. Uh, steering linkage, so floating window and full screen. Uh, auto zoom view, door opening warning, vehicle trajectory display, park distance control and transparent body. So it's a 0%. So if we've got that on 100, you can see through the car a little bit. Uh, electronic manual as well so it's a fully interactive digital manual for the whole car so if you are sat somewhere waiting for someone you can have a little peruse through this um, and it, it's actually really really good so instead of looking through a paper manual but there is one in the glove box it's a, a really nice and digital way of looking through what your car can actually do for you and it does seem fairly easy to read um, so you've got home screen controls here so it just explains everything really really simply for you there are some CarPlay instructions here. So it says CarPlay only works on iOS 10 and above. And it just, yeah, I quite like that. A lot of a lot of new cars now have this digital manual experience and it, it is quite a nice addition. Lastly, there is Map ISA. Um, so uh, it just says the software version is activated, the status as well, map data version. Um, so this car doesn't seem to have a built-in sat nav, but there is, um, a few bits and pieces in there. So that's been a look at the infotainment system on the Cherry Tiggo 7. If you want a full look at what this car is like to drive and all the interior features and exterior design, there's a link now in the top right -hand corner or the description down below if you want to check that video out. Thanks for watching this video. My name's Alex and I'll see you again next time.